Discover how you can green your life by building a knowledge base of current sustainable and eco-savvy trends. This series will delve into hot topics, current standards and practices, ways to design better spaces, and specify materials that benefit not only us as consumers, but the world as a whole. Members of Caragreen, as sustainable materials distributors, and other industry leaders weigh in throughout the series. This is Build Green, Live Green. So guests who are actually also local uh, to the Raleigh area, Raleigh-Durham area, and that is Francisca and Taylor from 21FHD. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us. We're very yeah. excited. Yeah, no, we're excited too. I mean, I think you guys have done such a great job bringing this idea of, you know, sustainable um, interior design and beautiful design together um, here locally. And you've done it, you know, you've garnered a lot of, t- of attention, you know, um, you know, everywhere, but, but he, just to have you guys be local is really important for us because I feel like sustainability is a message that, that Kara Green has, has tried to get out there and we've kind of seen sort of fits and starts and the way that you guys just bring it together um, really just resonates. And it, it makes me feel like, you know, all this progress we've been waiting for has kind of come to fruition um, at 21 FHD. So can you tell us a little bit about um, your firm and, and what you do in, in both of your backgrounds? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So we are a boutique hospitality interior design firm. So we focus on hospitality projects. We also focus on the guest um, environment and the client experience through what we call our Flena approach. So 21 FHD actually stands for uh, 21 Flena Hospitality Design. Um, and, uh, I can let Francisca maybe explain what Flena is, but basically, um, it, it's a process, it, it's a concept that we're using, um, to kind of integrate our pr- properties into the community. Can you yes. also just clarify just, um, because we, I always think it's important when we use these terms and people want to look them up. So if our, you know, um, viewers or listeners want to look them up, just spell it as well so that they can, can Google it if they want to. Okay. Sure. So flaneur is a French word. You spell it F L A N um, E U R. <laughs> and that means um, basically it refers to a person. And it's like a person who goes to a city, like a stroller, and immerses into the city and experience everything that the city has to offer. So um, we found that word. Um, describing everything that we wanted to do with our company. And so that's why we ended up like naming our company like that. Yeah. Um, and so we want the, the, our clients and their guests to experience that as well. Yeah. So yeah, taking our design, kind of that true sense of hospitality is brought through, you know, that integration of community and property. And then, you know, the whole idea carries into the experience of the client as well. Yeah. And always taking into account being sustainable. Yeah. So I think it was really interesting, I would say about 18 months ago, you know, you were starting to see sustainability kind of get some sort of permanence, right? People were starting to mm-hmm. just kind of widely accept it. And and then when COVID hit, I had this massive fear of, you know, I, I remember just reading an anecdote that was like, hey, super clean, healthy moms who were using method in seventh generation where's all the Lysol wipes? We can't find them at the market. We see you grabbing them all in this whole Mm -hmm. idea that we were going to go from being healthy and sustainable to bleach, just clean it, clean it, clean it. And and I was really scared that we were going to go back to that sort of this sterile environment, but you don't see that happening, do you? No, not at all. Um, We actually just read, um, Francisca found an amazing National Geographic article all about the trends going to to sustainable traveling. Um, and just, you know, just one that we found one statistic is that 70% of global travelers are more likely to book some sort of accommodation that they know is eco-friendly or has sustainable practices. And that's from booking.com just in 2019. So I think that that statistic is probably higher now at this point. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the other thing that we found is that a lot of people are interested in traveling more sustainable, but just a few people really understand the meaning of traveling sustainable. I, yeah, you, exactly. couldn't, you couldn't have, have hit on a, a bigger point. I mean, we found, you know, this, this shift away from the term green because it got overused and then people went to sustainable and they just used it as a for green. But 
they didn't really understand kind of the holistic definition behind sustainability about this idea of being able to actually sustain. Um, and, you know, there's kind of a, there's, there's more of a, an ecosystem around sustainability than just being, you know, recycled or, or bio-based or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sustainability refers to, there's actually three main pillars. So it talks about the environment, obviously, which everyone knows, um, the social impact. So the community around, how is it affecting it positively and then profits. Um, so that's how we appeal to our owners most of the time to our clients. But yeah, you want to make sure that anything that you're um, implementing is going to eventually have some sort of positive economic kickback to, you know, the developer or, or the, the community. community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and so I've seen Durham change a lot in general, which is where you guys are based, um, yeah. you know, just, just over time. And um, some of it, you know, it's become this kind of like, hip, you know, hip destination to go to. And um, there's a lot of, you know, sustainability being incorporated into, you know, a lot of the hospitality restaurants, bars, um, mm -hmm. and things there, um, there is going to be changes as we go back out into the world because people want, not everyone, but certain people want something different than what they left, right? This open mm -hmm. office space with this kind of, you know, everybody, you know, shares everything mentality, you know, people have a little bit of kind of trepidation towards that. Now, how do you think design is going to change in the places that you guys design for retail, hospitality, restaurants, bars. Yeah. Well, one of the, one part of being sustainable is being able to build um, or to create different spaces within buildings that are already there. Mm -hmm. um, so one, a good example is Durham because, you know, they're taking over these historic buildings mm -hmm. that have been there forever and mm -hmm. they're renovating the building. So that alone is already being sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, utilizing the characteristics of the building and using it to create beautiful designs that are, um, you know, more towards the modern style, but always using, you know, like different architecture part of the buildings to yeah. enhance the design yeah like kind of integrating so like adaptive reuse and so sometimes they're historic and sometimes they're just old garages there's actually a really cool project coming into durham where i think they're taking an old mill a, a brick factory actually is what it was and they're you know rejuvenating it so that's definitely something that i think we'll see more and more people doing is using what they already have mm -hmm. and then in terms of the interiors too um we're seeing a big push towards you know, thrifting certain items, you know, so that you have like a conversation piece within the design as well as refurbishing um, antique, you know, chairs or even just the chairs that you have. So kind of trying to prevent too many new materials from entering mm -hmm. into the circuit or, you know, figuring out how to creatively use those materials, um, you know, in a way that, you know, kind of informs the client. I know that we had kind of spoken before and it was such a great idea about informing the client that they're in a sustainable or an eco-friendly property. Um, because like Francisco was saying, only 15% of the 72 or 42%, I'm sorry, 42%, only 15 of those travelers who want to travel sustainably actually know what that even means. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely think we'll see a push, you know, towards educating the client in a way, in a visual way, or in some sort of way that um, really lets them know what, what kind of space they're in. And then that I think is only going to propel that, you know, that movement because they're going to feel proud about it. They're going to feel good about the space they're in and they're going to want to keep traveling to places that are similar and giving yeah. them that same feeling. Mm -hmm. And also that's a, you know, a tool for marketing because they're going to talk about it with other people and those people are going to be wanting to go to those places. And it's going to be, you know, like, the, you know, they're telling them other people and and so on. So mm -hmm. bringing more and more into the property as well as the community, because, you know, you're bringing more people into the restaurants and, and all of those things. So I think that, yeah, definitely how we're trying to appeal to some of our clients is that marketing aspect. Um, we're trying to educate them on the um, payback because, you know, the first thing you hear is it's too expensive and, mm -hmm. and they actually don't have updated information on how fast a building can actually pay itself mm -hmm. off essentially from those green upgrades. Um, 
So we kind of use that as well as um, the marketing aspect to let them know like, hey, this isn't going anywhere. So jump ahead of it. Be one of the first to get on this train where you're, you know, implementing it and telling clients that you're doing it. It's okay to brag about, you know, being sustainable and and eco-friendly and you should brag about it. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think that um, one of the things that we always saw early on when some of the green building standards like LEED came out was that there was, again, this hesitancy because it just seemed like this huge upfront cost and no payback. And over time, we've seen it's taken 10 years, but we see that the payback has been documented over and over and over again. And Mm -hmm. green and sustainable is not a nice to have. It's almost becoming an expectation as evidenced by these 70 percent numbers that you guys are talking about. And just to expand upon um, kind of what what you were getting at as far as the materials, you know, it's, it's kind of like we talked about doing all these things behind the walls, right? Like you put this great HVAC system in with all this filtration and solar panels on the roof. Mm-hmm. But what tells the story? And we, we, we kind of joked about a coffee table book that sits yeah. on a table and that piece of wood was from a you know, tobacco plantation that was cut down. And, you know, it's, it's got this, this mm-hmm. backstory and this countertop is made out of recycled paper and, you know, you or, or this, this wallpaper has tobacco leaves in it, right. In Durham where you, that was the big industry. You mm-hmm. kind of can incorporate some of those stories and really, really tell it and get people married to the idea of sustainability and sort of close that information loop. And I think that that's, mm-hmm. Um, the, the fact that you guys get that and you're starting to kind of build that into some of your design is really um, just kind of above and beyond what we what we typically see. Um, yeah. And, and then, another example that we had given too was the the rooftop gardens because we're seeing yes. those as kind of easy implemented, not easy, but but um, easier implemented uh, green infrastructure, I guess you would say, if it's an existing building. Um, and we were talking to a, a colleague not long ago, and they were saying that one of the things that the hotel wanted to do was have a vegetative roof that served as a garden that they could take the herbs from to use not only in their food, but their cocktails. And then they would tell the clients about it. You know, this herb just came from, you know, here and they would design special cocktails and food around that. And so it creates a story or a full experience that, like you said, will close the gap and the client will take with them and tell their friends about too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the, the you guys um, talk a lot about human interaction. Um, and that really is kind of sort of one of the last things I, I want to touch on, but the experience, that retail experience and the expectation, you know, people have been home for a long time. And if they're going to go out to a space, you know, you almost have to incentivize them. Um, and you guys as designers have these, you know, these tools to do that. Um, so what is that? What does that look like? What is the expectation for a retail experience? And what is this kind of the, when you talk about human interaction, how does that relate to to the space and the design? There's um, a new generation coming, <laughs> very different than, you know, past generations. They're asking for different things. The world has changed a lot in the last 10, 20 years. Um, and there's needs for, you know, different things. And one of those things is like, you know, people are not going to be working the same way that we're, we have been working. They're going to start working at different hours, different times. And everything is going to have to be open at certain point to serve everybody, right? And so we're looking forward to five, 10 years and see how the world is changing and what we can offer to those people later on that, you know, can satisfy all their, their needs. So they are asking for experiences. They don't care about going to a hotel that doesn't offer anything. They're, yeah. the, the way that they look at it, I guess like we travel and the way that I look at it when I travel is I'm looking for a space where I know that I'm just going to sleep there, but I probably spend some time there. And so what is this place going to offer me that I really want to pay for? So that's what we want. Just like give, tell a story, immerse the people with the, you know, in the city, everything that has to offer the culture, absolutely everything at the moment that they step into the property. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, essentially, at least for me, I feel like as a traveler, it would kind of integrate me into that culture, that community and and all that. And I would feel, you know, talking about human interaction, I would feel more 
excited to go out and interact with the community and the culture that's there and all of those things. And so ultimately, um, it, it does create this full experience from start to finish. And yeah, I agree. I think the days of, uh, you know, I just need a good bed to sleep in when I travel. I think those days are gone because people have been at home for a very long time. So they've gotten used to being, you know, at home and having certain comforts. And I don't think that that is going to fully go away, even though people want to go out and travel. I think they're going to want to have that safe haven, that comfort of home, um, but also be able to go out and interact um, and do it in a fun way where they feel, um, you know, comfortable in the environment outside and inside the property. Yes. And I think like one of the, the other things that are important to us is integrating the property into the community and the, the guests into the community, meaning that we're, they're giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a jar, idea jar in the office and we always like throw ideas in there. Um, and so we were talking to this company who's doing marketing for a, a property in the Caribbean. And so... Um, they showed us the design for the property and all of that. And it was really nice. And I, I saw um, the key for the for the hotel to get into the guest room. And I said, well, it's interesting that, you know, like if they're looking forward to what's coming, they're, they're still using uh, key, um, cards for the keys, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's plastic and it, it creates a lot of waste. And so, you know, it just came to me that why not look for artisans or people that can like break some, you know, um, like a bracelet, a bracelet or, something. or something. So they're, you know, hiring people from the community to do something like that. And they can offer that to the guests and, you know, be more sustainable because they're not like actually throwing plastic and, you know, creating mm -hmm. more waste. Yeah. Like the wristbands, I think the bracelets definitely for the wristbands and they can have like a sensor, they can have something in it, like for when you go to a resort to kind of identify you. Um, but yeah, just bringing in something from the community that, is also sustainable um and i will say that that resort from what we heard the owners before they got any designers in the owners picked out these insanely expensive door handles which is why they ultimately had to go with plastic but had they you know thought sustainably yeah. from the beginning you know we maybe would have been able to incorporate something like um you know a, a bracelet or, or a you know tech yeah just something, something you know create new ideas that where we can incorporate sustainable practices mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think you guys you guys talk about that, and we actually had a, an exchange a little bit earlier today about um, you know kind of beauty and sustainability coexisting. But I think you just introduced something else too, is functionality. So mm -hmm. why can't sustainability also be a functional thing? Like that bracelet would connect me to that property every time I saw it. I would remember that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I would come home and probably give it to one of my kids, but you're never going to, I'm not going to walk in with a plastic rectangle and be like, this is where I was. Um, yeah, you're, yeah. But you know, that's, it's kind of a, it's a nice keepsake and memento of that, of that experience. And I think that's what we're going to have to try to do is come up with through designers like you guys, better solutions that encompass sustainability. We all know it's coming, but sustainability can be beautiful. And I think that's right. been proven at this point time and time again. And then to add that functionality that you talk about, which is, really early collaboration. So um, I'm really excited to see, um, you know, kind of what's to come and to keep an eye on you guys. Can you kind of tell us how to follow you on, on Instagram and, and, and um, uh, LinkedIn? Yeah, absolutely. So our Instagram is definitely um, where you're going to have the most fun. We, mm -hmm. uh, and we do all of our own social content. So we're very, very proud of that. Um, and we are at 21 underscore FHD. Um, our LinkedIn is at 21 Flanelle Hospitality Design, and um, I believe you can find Francisca and I both there as well. We're the only two employees at the moment. And then um, our website is www.21fhd.com. That's great. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, we'll be in touch. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to working with you guys on some projects and keeping an eye on what you're doing and just kind of pushing this whole trifecta of function, form, and, and I guess, fashion <laughs> all <laughs> together at the same time. Yes. yes Thank absolutely. you. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for being on today. This is Jessica with Build Green, Live Green.